Blah. Y'all already know what it is. Your boy Yako, what it do? The outlet to reality, the holders podcast in Vegas and Chicago. This is the place where you want to hide from your drama or maybe hide from your baby mama. <laughs> Just kidding. But anyways, thank you for staying tuned. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Cha-ching! And today we have a very special guest who I consider one of my closest friends, a family. Give it up for your one and only, Tilly. What's up? How's it going? It's going amazing, girl. I'm so happy you're here. You don't understand. This is a big deal. You're so popular. I, I had to bring you here. But look, I, I do want to share a little story. So Tilly, Josh, and a few of our friends came to my house for a movie night. You know, we had Uno, kosher food, uh, watch Chucky. I think that for me, somebody coming to my house and we break, break. That's how you know we're family. You know, <laughs> we start at friends, but this is a whole nother level. And I'm very happy to have you both in my life. Uh, you and Josh. So that that I had to share, you know, a little little beans. But um, um, what do you remember that night? Um, I remember coming over and I remember being ready to watch Chucky. Like we were going to watch the Chucky movie. And then it didn't happen because we were just like schmoozing until like so late. And I had to leave in the morning for work but like yeah no i remember when we like first met you like i'm so glad we met you i feel like it was like such a chance thing like josh and i um he was like doing the moisture house events and i don't know why we were friends on facebook i don't know if you friended me or i friended you i don't know but we were friends on facebook and I'd seen your posts, like, you know, maybe, like, ar- around, like, young Israel age. And I was like, okay, his name's Yaakov. And he looks like he's, like, in the Moisha house, age demographic, 20 to 30-ish. And I was like, Josh, should we invite this guy? I don't even know him. Like, should I invite him over? This guy, Yaakov? His name's Yaakov. I mean, it seems safe. And he's, like, at Young Israel on Facebook. He was like, yeah, for sure. We need more, as many people as we can to come to the first event. And you showed up with, like, a full box of Modelo, <laughs> full pack. Oh. And that's, that's the end of it. Wow, that's amazing. That's yeah. Just, just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I do remember that, like, you messaging me coming to the event. And to be honest, right away, I felt like you and I, we clicked already because you're from Chicago. I'm from Chicago. So we have that history of like how the Orthodox community is that people don't really know. Um, I think this is great to our next, you know, topic, right? Of, you know, Tilly, you know, what would you say is the big difference from the Vegas Jewish community compared to Chicago? Because you live on both sides. Um, yeah definitely two different worlds like Vegas I think is different from like every other community in a way like not just Chicago I feel like Vegas is like a really unique Jewish community and every time I try to explain it to other people I have a hard time like getting across what's really like the hashkafa like what is the I don't know like what's the world view out here but we're just so diverse it's like a melting pot people from all over the place um Um, when I was growing up in Chicago, it's like a lot of, you know, it's like a more insular community. Like all the Jews are from like one part of Europe or, you know, like one part of Germany specifically, like my family's German, you know, there's like a whole neighborhood of like German Jews. There's like a whole neighborhood of like, you know, Chabad Jews who follow like Lubavitcher Rebbe. There's whole like neighborhoods of like Breslover Jews, like. And it's just kind of like built into the community throughout Chicago. It's such a big community. It's like, I think the third biggest, I think it's like New York, LA and Chicago. It's like, as far as like large Jewish communities go. So it was just kind of built into the infrastructure of everyday life, like being a Jew, you know, like all of the grocery stores carry a ton of kosher food. There's kosher grocery stores everywhere you go. There's three shuls on every block. like. You know, every other family's Jewish, or, or every family's Jewish, you know, like, this is on every door. 
So there's like a more, definitely like a community sense there of everyone taking care of each other. But I feel that Vegas, because we're small-ish and growing quickly, we are so tight-knit. Like we're also on top of everyone's needs in this community. It's just a little more tight-knit, you know? Like in Chicago, I could have gone to 10 different shuls in my neighborhood just to like shul hop, you know, versus every Shabbos, you know? Versus here, there's like three different, you know, shuls that I can go to, like three Orthodox shuls, you know? And everyone kind of knows each other. And it's good and it's bad, you know? There's like a lack of privacy in a way, but it's also when you need anything, everyone's got your back. So we're really blessed to be here. Oh, yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. I was going to say, too, like, you know, me growing up in Chicago, very Orthodox community is very strong. And it's probably the toughest, one of the toughest compared, I would say, the people don't understand, like, New York, it's very hard to get in that circle. Um, We're talking about old school. Like, you know, I have a lot of love for them. And you know, it's it's very different. You already know it's very different. You know, they have a different way of uh, showing their love. I feel like it's more tough. Like, they're very blunt. This is a little similar to you, Tilly, because I got to say this. <laughs> you know where I come time... from. You, know? <laughs> you can take the girl out of Chicago, but you can't take her out of, you know. You can't take the Chicago out of her. I still got a yucky lip vac, you know. So, like, it's really, Yeah. <laughs> On my no, safari, will get on me for not being, you know, uh, enough like I am too. Oh, man, you're so funny. Yeah. <laughs> but that's good. I think it's good that you're very blunt. And I love that. I'm, I'm the same in Chicago. Like, I'm very honest. I'm not going to go around the bush. I think that uh, one thing that I appreciate from you is uh, one day from Shabbat, uh, we were walking to Rabbi Matt's house. And... You were telling me you hanged out with two of your friends. They weren't Jewish. And um, you're like, you know, they're young and pretty. And I got excited, right? When I heard the word pretty, young, I was like, oh, snap, dude. You know what I'm saying? And so I was like, Tilly, you should introduce me to them, right? And then you're like, look, Yaakov, I got to be honest with you. You know I care about you, and I got to tell you this. I said, oh, oh what happened? <laughs> I'll help you find somebody who's Jewish, who's in the same you know, mindset, who's trying to grow spiritually. I feel like if I get you with one of my friends back to the desert, I got to get you back moving forward. What was the deepest, most loving advice anyone has ever gave me? I, I wish I even respect you more for telling me that. Because I'm like, man, she's looking out because I do need somebody who could help me, me elevate to, to grow with, to pray with, to, you know, I, I just need that. And I was like, okay, she got that Chicago. She real. She real. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I have like a hard rule about that. Never going to recommend you know, I have plenty of like non-Jewish girlfriends, never going to recommend them for my Jewish guy friends. Like, stopping Jewish men is a closed practice, honestly. Right. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, I, I think you're right. And it's a mitzvah for a Jewish person to marry someone who's a year, you know, um, we got it. We got it the halacha you know we can't we can't go backwards and i do gotta say this real quick before i forget so with vegas I, one thing i forgot so my brother elliot he was in the hospital and um i'm having surgery on shabbat and before shabbat rabbi Fromowitz sent him some challah pray for him rabbi meth brought some food um or Elliot and his family. And I love that, uh, what else? The Rebison, um, Rabbi Matt's wife, she also helped out with the doctors, like, um, because she, you know, she's involved there and she works there. So he does the treatment. And it was just so beautiful. They had a whole Shabbat meal. And I brought 
grape juice because I knew we need to do kiddish. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. But you know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I've never seen that. I've, I've gotten sick a lot of times, and I've never had that treatment. But in Vegas, it's a whole different world. Like you said, we're very tight. It's a small world. We don't expect nothing return. We just know we have to help others. I, I just, I had to put it out there. Right. Yeah. There's not like much going around. Like we're not the richest community. We're not the richest Jewish community, but like we're rich in Chesed and Simcha. Like we're rich in like just like amazing people who will go out of their way. You know, it, it, anything. You know, you don't even need to know a name. Like you know, a, a Jew's in the hospital. Like on Shabbat. Like he needs challah. Like you know, we're on it. Like totally. Yeah anyone in this community if there was you know if they were ever sick or in the hospital you know i've been in the hospital before and rabbi meth was like where like where i'm on the way right now do you need food like that hospital food is gross i'm bringing you food right now panina cooked like you know it was like amazing whoa i didn't know that yeah yeah and panina yeah working in the hospital like thank god you know Jews will help other Jews in that sense too. Like, you know, I'll help you. You know, if I know a good doctor in the hospital, if I have, a, you know, a, I know a guy who knows a guy, I can call someone and get you a better doctor, get you faster treatment, get you in there quicker, you know, get you seen by the best guy. Wow. We've got a lot of that going on. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Sure. Now, Tilly, I, I got to ask you, right? One of the biggest things I got to say that's amazing from you is in Shabbat, you're always excited motivated i gotta admit i can can witness one of the best cooks i've ever seen and the food is amazing you know what I'm <laughs> and i i gotta say what gave you this like like what does shabbat mean to you and why is it so special like i want to know more about it i think for me like the best part of shabbat is just like spending time with other people it's so funny that you're like, oh, you're always like so excited and like enthusiastic for Shabbat. I'm like, I'm losing my mind like every single like Friday afternoon. Like, you know, like, you know, we just had like 23 people at the Moisha house this last like Shabbaton. And I'm like going crazy. You know, all the girls are there like, Tilly, what can I do? Can I help you? Tilly, calm down. And you know what I mean? In the last 30 minutes before Shabbat, I'm just get this on the hot plate. Put that over there. I'm pulling, you know what I mean? Get this out of the oven. Like I'm going crazy crazy but and then i light the candles you know and then it's just like it's done you know whatever's not done is gonna be not done whatever's good is gonna be good and that's it like you know you just stop worrying you know it's in god's hands after that (laughs) but um yeah the best thing is spending time with people i'm always like going crazy up until the last moment until shabbat starts up until sunset you know and then finally like when the me- meal is happening you know i'll spend hours like cooking you know slaving and i'm like oh i just want this to be done I, like wish it would end you know i'll spend like the whole day cooking and then as soon as like shabbat is happening and we're at dinner with you know a whole table full of like people young people from our community who are in like a safe space of just our own people like that sort of like exclusive space it, i'm like, I can't get enough. Like, I wish it would never end. Like, I'm like, please, like, eat slower, everyone. Like, you know, I want this to, like, last forever. You know, it's, like, the best thing. I, like, never want it to end whenever I'm sitting at the table. It's the most rewarding thing in the world to be able to, like, cook for people and, like, cook a kosher meal for people who might not be eating one otherwise that night. And, you know, even if they're driving home from Shabbat dinner that night, you know what I mean? At least they ate, like, a kosher Shabbat dinner and they celebrate Shabbat in a meaningful way, surrounded by other Jews and you know like in our circle I'm like I lean more observant you know than the people like we're often surrounded by but I feel that like their presence is really what's like bringing the Shabbos holiness you know even you know regardless of whether they're keeping every you know mitzvah like I do you know, just to have them there and all this precious in the Shabbos, like at the Shabbos table, you know, learning Torah, you know, it's the best thing, singing songs, eating food. It's all you could ask for. Biggest blessing. I 
love it. I love it. I, I gotta say something, you know. Only are you one of the, you know, I, I feel like you a big person in Vegas because you have a lot of good qualities that people don't know. I'm gonna give you one. So you and Josh, Josh, you guys are together, about to get married. You know, he's your fiance. But this is the thing that got me. It was like, Tilly's a real, she a gangster for this. You know what I'm saying? She, she a true one. one. When I knew that Josh, you know, was on his way of, like, you guys been together for, for a minute, right? Mm -hmm. And I love that you waited for him. Like, you guys were together, but you're like, I'm going to wait for you until you become orthodox, right? I'm not going to push. But when you're ready to make that transition, I'm gonna still be there for you. Ooh, when I when I hear that, Tilly, she's still there for him. And my boy Josh, she's like, man, I gotta study, I gotta read this, I got, I gotta, I gotta change this. But just seeing that, that's rare. I gotta be honest. A lot of people would walk away and say, I'm not gonna wait for a year, in <laughs> two months. But you did. That shows that you have patience. And you really care about Josh. I, and I think that's just mind blowing. So I, I got to give that to you. I think a lot of people, I, I feel like that's amazing. That's a, that's how, you know, you have that true love, you know, you're waiting to, to wait for your man. You're like, I can't wait. You know what I'm saying? Well, right. He's for sure. You know? Yeah. Thank God he decided to, you know, in his own ways and his own time you know take things on and i'm so grateful for him i love him so much um you know we're all on our own journey and like for me i don't mind waiting so much it, like i always am reminded of the story of rabbi akiva and his wife rachel um i'm sure you've heard it i teach it to my preschoolers every year and i always think this is so me like that is so me <laughs> Um, but it's basically, there's this great rabbi, Rabbi Akiva, who knows basically nothing. He knows no Torah until he's 40 years old, you know, doesn't even know the Aleph base. And at 40 years old, he like decides to go and learn some Torah, you know, figure out what it's all about. Goes to learn for like 12 years, you know, becomes a pretty, you know, learned man. And, you know, comes back after 12 years to his house. And before he can even hear, enter his home, he hears his wife Rachel talking, saying, you know, oh, like, you know, talking to a friend or friends, her friend's like, oh, don't, haven't you missed, like, Rabbi Akiva? He's been gone for 12 years studying Torah. He's just going to leave you for 12 years. She's like, you know, I'm happy as long as he's studying Torah. You know, if he came back right now, I'd ask him to turn around and study Torah for another 12 more years. And he did. Before he even entered the house, he turned around, went back to school, studied Torah for 12 more years, and then finally came back a great, you know, Talmud Chacham. And Torah scholar and Torah great, the sage of ours, you know, so... Rabbi Kiwi, you know, Rachel waited, you know. Sometimes you gotta wait for greatness. <laughs> oh, that was deep. That was deep. I got I got the chills. They're multiplying. You know what I'm <laughs> that is so cool. I'm I'm so glad you said that because Rabbi Kiva is actually my favorite rabbi to study and like I love his work. Work a lot of people don't know his story, and I'm so glad you shared that because that was just so like beautiful. And I, I think that's too is part of, you know, relationship. A lot of people think, you know, it's only happy moments, but you're going to have ups and downs. And the things that you're going to remember the most is the times you guys had the like the hard times. But when you guys overcame that, that's what you're going to remember. I'm not gonna remember when you went to Hawaii and it was so nice. You're gonna remember, <laughs> look, look, babe, we we went through this, did it together. And, and we got this, you know, like you're going to remember those things. I think it's beautiful. Really, I got to know. I have to know because my brother Josh got nervous when I asked him this. I don't think I even had time. I think the timer went out now. But I do got to know, how did you guys both meet? So it's kind of funny. Um, like I said, it's like a small community. Everyone sort of knows each other. In a way, even if you don't know each other, we, everyone knows of each other. Um, also, Josh, his last name's Layla, Josh Layla. And 
I don't know, everyone out here in Vegas, like if you're a Vegas native, you kind of know like Aaron Layla jewelers. You kind of like know the story. You've heard the jingle on the radio a million times. Every time, you know, I told people I was dating Josh when we first started dating, they would like immediately start seeing his jewelry stores jingle back to me. And I'm like, <sighs> it's like the association, you know? So everyone knows each other. I, I knew of him. I knew he existed. I knew he was Jewish. Um, yeah, it's like a small community. Everyone knows of each other, but I didn't really ever meet him um, until I would like got on J Swipe. I was swiping on J Swipe. You know, we messaged back and forth a little bit after swiping on each other, and then went on one first date. I remember, and I drove like thirty minutes to the state, and I thought this guy is so nice. He was like way nice, way polite, way respectful, and me, I'm like insane like literally insane like crazy i'm like i'm gonna be way too crazy for him like he's not gonna be able to handle me like he's gonna literally think i'm insane and also just he's just not gonna be able to hang i'm too much like i'm just like you know i thought he was too nice you know what i mean he wasn't gonna be able to handle it not be able to keep up you know so we went on one date and i was like that guy's super nice but i don't know I was still, you know, whatever. I was like a Jewish girl dating in the community out here. I had like eight other dates lined up. It's like how it is when you're dating out here in a small community. Like all the girls out here kind of feel the same energy, you know. We're all getting scooped up real fast. So I don't know. I was kind of like keeping my options open, I guess, until my good friend Britt. Um, I met her in like the kosher aisle at Smith's. Um, she and her twin sister Bree were like, oh, you're looking f- to date, you know, a Jewish guy. We know this great guy named Josh Layla. He's like a jeweler here in town. You know, they had gone into his jewelry store when Britt was engaged and his dad was in there and he's like, please find my son a Jewish wife. Like, please. And so they were like, oh, I think I know somebody. And so they encouraged me to like go on a date with him. And I was like, guys, I already burned that bridge. I went on one date with him. He was really nice. And then I just like ghosted. I never texted him. <laughs> like whatever. <Yeah. laughs> and I was like, I totally burned that bridge. Like I can't, you know, he won't go on another date with me. And they were like, he'll go on another date with you. These Jew, you know, Jew- how Jewish women are. If you know how Jewish women are, this is how they are. Um, they texted him. My friend Britt texted him. Hey, you know, Tilly, she'll take another date with you. Take her out to this restaurant, you know, buy flowers, wear this you know, go, go to this restaurant across the store from your jewelry store and, you know, take her to the store and show her around, like told him exactly what to do. And that's what he did. He picked me up, brought flowers, took me to the jewelry store. And, you know, I was, you know, I was like, this guy's again, I was like, this guy's really nice, but am I going to freak him out because I'm insane? And like, I think just like over time, I fell in love by realizing every time I wasn't insane in front of him, he was okay with it. And he handled it really well. And like level-headedly. I love that about him. He's very like calm and level-headed and rational. And I get like, you know, overwhelmed, but he's great. So yeah, that was kind of how we met. And it just, you know, just kind of happens. And thank God we're engaged now, planning a wedding very soon. Please God in the next, few months before the end of the year you know oh so man. you better be going to the gym ready to lift josh on that chair like on a table like it's gonna be crazy i need acrobatics i need you to be one of the fundamental pillars of our human pyramid like so i got you i got you if you need me ready. to be an mc i'm already here you know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> oh man you're so funny I, I can't wait to i think that let's get married I'm going to be so happy because you guys are one of my favorite couples. I got to say the best couple of the year. So I got to give the prize to y'all. You know what I'm saying? Of the year award. There you go. Oh, man. But- wedding of the year. It's going to be great. It's going to be so much fun. Oh, yeah. I can't wait, girl. You know, when I hear this with food, maybe I might find my true love. You know, I know. Maybe I, uh-huh. you know, I, you know, I'll be like, oh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> Jewish wedding in Vegas. There's nothing like it, you know? Right. Oh, man. I'm so happy. Now, girl, I, I do want uh, you to share a little something. So I know that that uh, there's a class that you put together with Rabbi Matt 
Uh, it's like a women's class. If you can share a little bit about that, I, I think that's amazing that you're doing it. Um, yeah, I just basically have gotten together a group of girls to do some learning at the Colel here in Vegas, the community Colel. Um, you know, why leave all the learning for the guys? You know, all the guys are doing their Cholan and Gamara. I'm like, I want in on on the Cholan and, and the Tara, you know, so... We've been doing our own class, you know, studying different topics. We studied like Chaim a little bit. Um, we've been studying just like the concept of Mashiach as of late because there's like a lot of weird misconceptions about that stuff. And that's yeah, been really, really great. Um, super fun. Rabbi Meth usually teaches it at the Kolo. There's always food, kosher sushi, whatever. It's great. It's a great time. Yeah. Oh, and and is it every Wednesday or when is it? Yeah, every Wednesday at 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Young okay. girls at the Kolel. It's really fun. Nice, nice. No, that's good. I think that's good to find that. Uh, because I know there's a lot of people that are trying to search and grow, but they don't know they don't start. I think your class that you put together with Rabbi Meth, I think it's a great way to um, you know, ask questions and um, you know see where you are in life you know if there's something you don't understand you can ask somebody it's great i think everyone needs something where they can feel like they're moving up in life and, and growing uh spiritually even mentally um but yeah that's that's beautiful tilly i'm really happy uh girl i gotta tell you this an awesome episode you did awesome i gotta tell you uh <laughs> So I'm going to I'm going to wrap it up real quick. Uh, guys, this is the outlet to reality. The oldest podcast in Vegas and Chicago every Tuesday. Get to like, share, comment and subscribe. Y'all know where to find me. I'm on Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, the outlet to reality. My Snapchat's take one pass it. And my TikTok is at Yakov 28. And Tilly, where can my fans find you? <laughs> Um, I have Instagram at Tilly Speeds. Yeah. Do that. Thank you, girl. Keep it simple. <laughs>